Hello, my brothers and sisters in the Order. Welcome back to the Order and I am Celtic Templar. And we're going to be talking about this new helmet. Nope, not this helmet. It's technically more of like what you might call a secret helmet. Or secret helm, if you all want to pronounce it like that. Hey guys, welcome back. This is my new secret helmet from AllBestStuff.com. AllBestStuff.com, if any of y'all know, is a very great site for any of y'all who are looking for a uh, good, uh, well, working type of armor and equipment. And especially if y'all have a budget right now because of this and that, well, this is one of your helmets. This is the secret helmet, and it costs around $75. Five dollars and sixty cents. Last time I checked, so I'll leave this uh, type of a uh, number board here, so that way y'all can understand uh, the difference in the quantity for everywhere that it will ship and such, and all it shows. Uh, now, it's made out of fourteen gauge steel, and as well, it's uh, nine by eight, which means it has the historical oval shaped design, which. This is how most helmets actually should be. Uh, I had to put this out here. And all this stuff does try their best because they do this all by hand. Now, uh, all this stuff, as you all know, I've gotten a lot of armor from in the past. So, yeah. Now, this horror is pretty perfect. And when I mean pretty perfect, I mean pretty awesome. Just look at that bad boy. Now, uh... The reason I wanted this is because of the fact of how badass this looked, and because I will be doing some crusades uh, very soon. Not that type of crusade, but you know, reenactments or uh, how-to videos and such. I thought to myself, this needs to be used, and I had to get it. Now, one thing I do have to put the house out here, many people don't realize this, but Secret Helms have actually been used as a helmet for a long time, amount of time. In fact, it's actually stated that during the uh, Viking period, some Vikings would have used a helmet, just as a bowl-shaped helmet like this, or skull cap, as it's also known as, in which uh, later would sometimes actually even sport the iconical nasal guard, but that was because it was a lot cheaper to manufacture it like this. And in fact, it actually can be seen that archers, especially in uh, medieval England, were most likely to have worn something like this. Now, I want to put this out here, y'all. This helmet is perfect for anyone that's into, uh, like, Crusader-style military and such. And, well, the way you saw me wear it with the coif underneath and the mail on top, that's how it got its name, Secret Helm, because it was underneath the mail armor. And, in fact, it was a secret helmet in which... If, say for example, somebody was fighting on the, if you were fighting on the battlefield and you were the medieval knight, guess what? You're going to want to protect yourself. And just in case if you fall off your horse, for example, guess what? you got to remove your, well, said, uh, fully enclosed helmet like this, that of which was used by the uh, 13th century or as well even the uh, early 14th century. And in such, this type of helmet, would, the fully enclosed, would be a major drawback for you. So, they had to start using a secret helm, especially underneath the helmet, because of the fact if, say for example, you fell off your horse, you gotta remove your helmet in order to breathe, see, and do everything. However, this would later on actually uh, be replaced by uh, said visored helmets and such, so that's a little different. But, this helmet, I love the fact of how great they got at it. And the fact is, they gave me Aventail holes here, which the reason I'm calling these uh, Avondale holes is because of the fact that's what they're used for. This means I can attach a male Avondale. If you know what Avondale is, Avondale is this uh, net of male rings, kind of like what we see on, well, some Viking helmets like, uh, or Vendel period style helmets like this, which has this Avondale, which can go all around the head or sometimes the side of the head and such, so it depends. Now this, it does work like the historical medieval type of ways it would have done. And the reason is, I do like this also, it even has these uh, little ball rivets here, 
This means that it could hold my head in place while I'm in my helmet, and as well while I'm wearing the mail. So this does its job. And it's also because this uh, historical type design, in which I think they actually tried their best at copying from historical uh, manuscripts and such, they actually put on this big leather uh, ear shield, as it's known as. So that is actually historical somewhat to their actually wear. And the thing is, most of the time, which many people don't realize this, but the majority of people who wore these weren't just knights, they were actually archers or common folk. And as such, this was technically the only thing of armor they could mostly get their hands on mostly, so it was uh, more re uh, common to see them wearing this than you would see them wearing, say, a nasal helm or something like that. So, yeah, still though, this is pretty perfect to how that would have been used. Now, uh, as I said, medieval archers, they love this type of helmet for one major reason. One is the fact, if it's a longbowman, I can draw back my bow easily. Now, we actually do see this helmet being used in the video game Kingdom Come Deliverance a little bit. Uh, and in such, we also see it also have some Aventail attachment on it. And as well, I want to put this out here, even in the movie Outlaw King, the character who's playing as Robert the Bruce actually is wearing a type of secret dome helm, or in this case, a skull cap having the attachment of mail, which that's what they mostly would have done. And in fact, by the time of, say, Bannockburn and such, some, most people were actually just taking mail and just attaching it to, say, a helmet like this, and just wearing the great helm on top. Now, why would they do this? Kind of obvious. It was a lot more uh, inexpensive and cheaper, and in such, it was kind of a lot easier to do. So, you can see why. Now, uh, how long would it be till they later on replaced it is another story. Because it is stated that the uh, secret helm would still be used throughout technically another few centuries. Up until the part time of the, uh, I want to say, uh, the Lanschkinnicht. Because the fact is, the Lanschkinnicht, or now you don't know who these guys These are German mercenaries, or... Uh, in other words, these guys are the guys that held the German Zeihander. And, in fact, we see this guy wearing a type of helmet near identical to this. That's right, it would have evolved into that. And so, the secret helm still technically lived on a long time. And, now I hear many people already asking, Templar, why would you wear this? This does not look perfect. Actually, this thing would have done a lot of protection for your skull. In, in which it's technically better to have a helmet rather than no helmet. So, yeah. And the fact is, most people would actually want to get a helmet that, which is cheap and such, and also heavily effective. And in fact, this is made out of 14 gauge steel, so this can pretty much do its job at stopping certain weapons. Oh, this thing is just awesome. Now, as I said, if any one of y'all wants to get one of these, here's the thing. Just go down into the link and it will have you sent to right over I got this from. All this stuff does their job. This is all handmade and they do their damn finest. However, since it's handmade, you might want to be careful when you get it because it might not be what it is. Uh, but still, I would have to say this is probably a very great helmet for anyone who which is in the crusading periods and such, and pretty much is into the fighting style of, say, like the 13th century or even early 14th. So, yeah, it still would do a job. However, this, as I said, this helmet saw a long time of battle, so, yeah, it's pretty much best to just wear this as many times as you can. So, yeah, this is still a great helmet. Now, one major thing I have to put out here is the major names this type of helmet would have taken. It was originally known as a helm, just known as a plain a helm, sometimes a bowl helm, as it was sometimes called by the Saxons during prior before uh, their fall from a grace in 1066, in which only a few people actually were stated to have worn something like this. I don't know if that's true or not. Sometimes they would have actually integrated a nasal guard on it, However, uh, 
many times over, the skull cap would evolve over time, meaning it would take many drastic turns. Now, this is technically the light period model, that of which we see this fully designed shape, meaning it's not being held together with rivets like we see here. So, pretty much, it is doing the job as it's meant to be. So, why would he evolve so much? Kind of obvious, because of the fact of Warp Air. And the fact is, Warp Air evolves, so you got to evolve the armor. And it's actually did a good job at it. You know, as I said, this would have evolved so many times, but it had different names for so many reasons. And I don't know when it gets the name Secret Helm, but my best guess would be when we see the Crusading periods or uh, the era of the 13th century, my best bet. So that's my best guess at it. But we don't know how many times that people would have worn this. And such, though, it is kind of common to actually understand why a medieval knight would want to wear something like this underneath his male coif. Majorly because you don't want to get whacked in the head. Because, here's something. Now, I'm not putting on the armor cap right now. It's a little faster. So let's do this. But you see my point. Upon wearing the mail, right over here, literally, you can't even understand if I'm wearing a mail. <laughs> literally. Like, in fact, I'm asking you, what do you see? Do you see a mail coif or do you see a helmet? Nail coif or helmet? Nail coif or helmet? Literally, that is what you can't see. Uh, now, I want to put this out here. This type of helmet was incredibly used for a long time, so we could see why it was used for so long. And such. Let me then put on the helmet. And there we go. It is fully on. See my point? Now, I'm pretty much betting that most of y'all can't even understand what I'm saying, so I'm going to take this off again. <laughs> but as I said, y'all, this is made out of a 14 gauge steel. It's 9 by 8, so it's perfectly oval shaped for any of y'all who are looking for something like that. So, perfect for anybody who's using a uh, type of secret helm design. Uh, but when we go further back, like say during the Viking periods and Viking raids, you might want to uh, make sure that it's uh, not like this one. Make sure it's like uh, being held together with rivets. Because the fact is, that's how it would have been back then. So I think only until we get to, say, the Crusades is when it starts to evolve into this. So, yeah, they, uh, anyways, all this stuff, they did a great, damn greatest job at doing this helmet. But anyway, guys, like and subscribe for more videos, and as well, also click the bell button for more notifications. And as well, also check us out on Facebook so that we can also see when the next video comes up and what we're going to be talking about soon. But anyways, guys, hopefully to see y'all in the next one, and have a great day. Mm -hmm.